Hello listeners, we are your co-hosts Janine Bailey and Marie Quigley for the Empower World Coaching and Leadership Podcast. Empower World brings guests who are making a difference to the world to inspire coaches and leaders who lead with mind, heart and soul. Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Empower World Coaching and Leadership Podcast. Um, And wherever you are in the world, I'm so glad that you've joined me today. I haven't got my wonderful business partner, Marie Quigley, with me. And instead, I have two of my amazing colleagues who I have had the pleasure of knowing for maybe a couple of years now. And we have met through the, the Climate Coaching Alliance somehow, some way through through that wonderful organization that was set up by um, Josie McLean, Eve Turner and Alison Wybrow a couple of years ago in response to the climate, I guess, danger uh, that has been occurring over the many years, responded to what is it that they could do to respond to what was happening in our world. And so um, luckily I came and stumbled across this amazing organization and through it met Sue, Sue Glendinning, who is with me today, and also Tim Collings. And Tim, I met, so I met Sue through Tim and Tim has been a previous podcast guest on the Empower World Coaching and Leadership podcast. So, So you might recognize him from a past episode. So as I mentioned, these two wonderful people that I have been working with for the past, or meeting with for the past couple of years, um, we decided to come together because we are all passionate about this work that we do, particularly coaching in relation to climate. And of course, many things associated with that, for example, the Indigenous side of things. So I'm calling in from the Wadarung land, that are part that is part of the Kulon Nation. So I pay my respects to elders past and present, and I pay my respects to yours wherever you are in the world. I'm so grateful to be here on this magnificent land. So I've done enough talking. I'm going to hand over to my guests, my amazing guests, uh, to introduce themselves. So first and foremost, I'm going to hand over to Sue, who's sitting on my left. Sue, would you like to introduce yourself to our audience today? Thank you, Janine, and and um, it's wonderful to have this opportunity to uh, to be here and be part of this podcast. And I'm calling in. I'm in Melbourne, and I'm calling in from Wurundjeri country, um, part of the Kulin Nation. And uh, it's raining just where I'm sitting at the moment, so that reminds us of you know where we are and what surrounds us and how things can change. It's a constant reminder, isn't it, the weather and um, how things can change within our environment and with, within what we're doing and how that impacts on us, um, even with our moods, I guess, from, from day to day and, uh, and just the impact it has us, on us in our, in our lives. So um, I'm a coach, um, of course, and met you, as you said, through the, the Climate, Coaching Climate Alliance. Um, so it was, it was wonderful to do that. So you meet some incredible people on your journey. I'll hand over to Tim. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Janine. Thank you, Sue. Hello, audience folk, or hello again, uh, depending on, on how devoted a listener you are. Um, I can't recall, Janine, when our first conversation here was. My sense is it was maybe late last year. Um, mm, yeah, you know, when we were first kind of talking about the the work that called us to be together in uh, in, in climate related coaching. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm joining today from um, the unceded ancestral lands of Darawal speaking people here at the southern end of Darawal country, uh, the borders of Yuan country in um, what is known uh, as South Coast New South Wales in Australia. And I too am a coach, have been coaching eight years, I think now. Um, and yeah, it was, was, I suppose, kind of striving to find out how to bring the stuff that I cared the most about into my work as a coach. And um, yeah, found, was drawn to 
uh, you know, fell into um, the Climate Coaching Alliance um, immediately, you know, through through Josie, um, and then sort of connecting more deeply with the work locally here, um, and yeah, ha- have kind of coached in a number of different ways now over the the past kind of two and a bit years um, in recovering communities uh, bushfire and flood impacted communities on the east coast of which there are many and an increasing number you know working uh with those who have not been directly impacted and are working in and with community um to adapt and mitigate um you know in readiness and anticipation of of what may well lie ahead and in corporates you know with now certainly in australia post most recent federal election a real kind of intention setting to do and be more deliberate around climate action uh in the broad spectrum not all by any means but the broader spectrum of the australian corporate landscape uh so that's Mm. enough for me Mm. for now (laughs) thank you tim and again a big thanks to you both for joining joining me today and supporting the empower world podcast which we know goes out to many coaches across the world. Um, We know that we're getting downloads all around the world. And we also know that we get approached by coaches wondering how they can support climate change, climate action, uh, and potentially support those who are in um, states of anxiety, states of overwhelm. Uh, perhaps doing too much because they're they're a, a real activists in terms of the the climate side of things. So so we get approached by coaches all the time and leaders as well. You know what what's what is mine to do? And and certainly that was a question that I held for myself. What can I do as a coach to support the change that needs to happen in our world today? In fact, I saw a, uh, no, I didn't see, I, I, well, I saw a post about David Attenborough calling out to the world to make change now, to make change right now, because it is getting to a point of being too late. I couldn't even, I couldn't even actually watch the post because I knew that it would bring up a whole lot of <sighs> emotion for me, but I absolutely hear his cry as I'm sure a lot of the listeners do too wondering what what is it that I can do as a coach so there's so much more that we can do than we actually realize and so the three of us we know that we've got our not only our coaching practice where we are supporting our our own clients but we're also doing things in other ways to support climate action and change and we've also been getting together to see what we can do to support organizations who also perhaps don't know what to do and and are asking themselves what is mine to do so so I'm, I'm going to hand it over to either one of you to share your thoughts about you know what is it that we can do as as coaches to support perhaps more than just the individual organizations um, something along the lines that perhaps we might be doing here as as a th- as a threesome, which we know will grow. Um, but I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Oh, just Sue, just thinking about your comment about um, David Attenborough and the work he's doing, which I'm sure we're all more than familiar with, and I think. Sometimes people feel that there's a man who has influence, um, you know, he has the credibility and people listen. People will listen to him and people will, you know, believe him and, and people will, will get on board. But on many occasions, I think they feel that, what can I do? I'm, I'm a small person, if you like, compared to someone who has that much influence and, um, and that much scope. So what can I do? as a single person or as part of a small group possibly? And the answer is that we can all do so much more. And I think asking that very question, Jenny, you know, what's mine to do is looking to yourself first to say, well, I'm now going to take some responsibility 
around what's possible for me to do. Can I influence other people? Can I influence a group? Can I bring a group of influencers together? And um, and it's about how do you create the, the conditions, I think, for that discussion, you know, for that important discussion that just might open up new ideas and new possibilities. So they're just some of my thoughts around that. Mm. And is, isn't it amazing? I mean, that is, is such a powerful thing that you've just shared, Sue, because, you know, just getting curious and connecting with people and asking that question of self and of and with others can lead to amazing, amazing things like the Climate Coaching Alliance, like potentially the work that we're about to start, um, like the community work that you've been involved in, that I know the work that Tim's been involved in and certainly the community work that I've been involved in can just lead to incredible change. But, of course, it's, it's, it's like those drips. We need many, many, many more of those drips. Exactly. Yeah. I think my, uh, my response, my thoughts on what you've both said, I think as coaches, I think there's a number of ways that, that, that we can contribute. Um, and uh, I think the easiest way to think about it is um, you know, what, what can I do? What can we do? And, and then what okay. is... What is the kind of the the big collective shift beyond the immediate we? Um, so I think as coaches and speaking you know, to an audience that I appreciate is not entirely, but is predominantly coaches, I think there's there's definitely work to be done from a strengths perspective around you know what we don't need here is some in at least in my experience, you know, working in, in places where you know climate change is happening and has happened uh on the ground it, it's not a radical you know revision control alt delete of you know your entire life and lifestyle it, it, it's a it's a strengths-based approach to do intentionally from where you are um and leaning into the strengths that you have i would also encourage a, a narrative approach um and not uh, yeah only but you know, i think particularly referencing you know, david drake's pioneering work in this space you know, like we all have a story of the role that we play in the world and uh, something that i've been practicing with some of my clients is what's their climate story right what what is it what is it that's calling calling them you know what are the shifts that they've been through you know what are the threshold moments that they've experienced that have brought them into this realization that they have a role to play in this work in this movement you know in these communities um which doesn't necessarily involve quitting your job and you know walking everywhere you go for fear of you know sort of being accused of hypocrisy right like we're, we're all in this system together as it is and the only way it's going to change is together so i think the strength's really helpful the narrative bit and that kind of brings up a lot of realization of the shifts that have already occurred and and, and quite often in my experience with clients you know some insight into the shifts that have happened and something which is a bit newer for me, really been exploring only in the last couple of years and introducing into my coaching work only in the last couple of years in both an individual and collective senses is futures work, right? Rather than thinking about this linear singular future and it's only one thing, and kind of what can we do? Thinking about plurality and that there's lots of potential futures and they're really kind of emerging right in front of us. Um, and the stories that we tell ourselves about our possible futures really significantly impact on what we actually do right here, right now. Um, so I think all of that at an individual level, and then it's, well, what's ours to do together? And then, you know, group coaching and those same constructs in a group forum, and then, you know, with other more specific group um, processes like collective intelligence facilitation and things like that. Um, and then this is the the work that you know you're referring to there, Janine, that you know, we we are we are intentionally you know commencing is how can you then weave groups together that represent a system 
or a large part of a system and then have that group as a collective of change agents nurture and sustain and energize um, together. And I think that's absolutely a role, you know, for a kind of a coaching convener, um, you know, sort of in, 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 in the weaving of that group, you know, as a participant, as a peer, you know, as an inviter, as an initiator. Um, I think that, yeah, I think if any or all of that, uh, you know, sounds like it's of interest, then come on down because there's much to do. <laughs> there's certainly this certainly is Tim yeah thank you for sharing and you know what what you've just shared reminds me of the work actually as we all know the work starts from within first and foremost the work starts within and that can be very 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 challenging and also very um empowering <laughs> it's a, a i guess a word that many coaches may use the word empowering but i i do remember going and doing this work i, I was part of a, a climate um course i guess and actually uh, the work that that i was invited to do really took me on a journey um, around myself and to realize actually it's about connecting connecting to self first and foremost um, so that we can do this work this bigger work so so those groups that you were talking about tim potentially and you said you mentioned being coach led i, I think that's a really powerful point because um, perhaps we, when we're nurturing supporting groups coaching groups there will be things where people will potentially connect to something that's really really quite deep really quite emotional and so having a coach facilitating this conversation in the moment can be very very powerful so thank you for sharing that because I think the coach's work can yeah. be ordinary yeah. Sue do you want to say more to that exactly I'm I I agree with that and I was thinking before, or while both you and uh, the going to the points that both you and Tim were making, and you know, we talk a lot as coaches about you know the the what, the why, and the how, and not necessarily in that order. And sometimes it's being clear on all of those, but but getting in touch with with your why. And uh, Tim used the word intentional before, and I think this is a word that's going to have a huge impact on the work that we're doing because it, it is very intentional work. And I think that's going to be the, the, the crux of everything. Why, you know, why are we doing it? What's, what's the intention? And, and looking to the outcome. And often we don't know really what the outcome is going to be. You're just working towards something. And this is where the, the collective comes in. So it can be your, um, you know, the collective why or the individual why. But that's when they come together. And I think that's when the magic happens because that's when the discussion opens right up and then you start becoming very intentional around what you're doing and what you're creating. So, you know, whether it's sustainability or climate or whatever, um, it's being really strong with, with your focus. And But being open to exploring at, at the same time. And this is where having uh, a coach sort of facilitate the discussion can often encourage the questions to come out and, and um, encourage people to explore all of, of what's possible. Yeah, I love that, Sue, and, and potentially really tapping into the individual's why, which is connected to the group's why, which is connected to, you know, the systems. I'm, I'm, my hand is <laughs> going around bigger and bigger for those who are listening. <laughs> but to indicate, you know, there, there are all these amazing systems that we're part of. So, and that's, again, the power and beauty of this work when we're working with with groups and, and systems, it has that ripple effect and I was talking about those many drops that are needed to make a like I'm seeing your river behind you to make that river or those drops that are potentially landing in your your house right now because of the storm that you're experiencing um so it can be incredibly powerful work this group work Tim I see you in 
looks like deep thinking mode. I'm wondering what's <laughs> coming up for you. <laughs> uh, am, I, am I that obvious to read? Um, yes, there was some very ponderous beard stroking going on. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, what was coming up? Yeah, just sort of hearing, hearing, um, you know, this emphasis on the, you know, the, the coach role in this group context. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, yeah, one of the things that's been very, very apparent to me in the last few years is you know, so much nuance and subtlety is needed in what it is that coaches do to hold this space and, and, and facilitate these dialogues, you know like a lot of it is kind of that silent invisible work um you know how how do you hold the energetic space you know how how do you nurture connection and trust in groups who don't know each other um or you know only know parts of each other um because in a lot of contexts people don't feel that they can show up fully um and, and I think that, you know, that, that specifically that last point, you know, it leads to so much dissonance that then leads to so much sort of, well, maybe apathy, but even just like not apathetic mm -hmm. intentionality, but just procrastination. And well, I, I, I couldn't show up in my workplace and say that I, you know, give a stuff about what's happening in the world because we're just here to do our work. Um, so I think there's a lot under and within that, that that frame of saying you know this is a coach held space um you know we started the conversation janine with you talking about you know anxiety um and grief even you know in the climate context and mm -hmm. you know how can that be invited in in a way that is nurtured and can you know lead to you know sort of a, a an energizing potential for the for the larger collective right that, that that's that's complex so i think i'll just leave it with saying I think that as coaches, you know, sort of holding a space so that all voices can be heard as they need to be heard is 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 kind of vital. And knowing that you both have done parts work, you know, in your in your coaching backgrounds, yeah, that's true for individuals as well, right? There's lots of voices going on. Um, you know, the voices that say I can, and the voices that say you shouldn't, and the voices that say. Well, maybe tomorrow um you know like we need to hear those voices as well and then in the collective the compounding of of all of that right? um so yeah i'll leave it there thank you tim and i you know i love that terminology that you've used of holding the, the space being able to hold the space to allow all of those parts those voices to come in because um you know, i'm sure my colleagues here, Sue and Tim, uh, agree that each of those parts have wisdom and it's it's tapping into the wisdom of, of all of those parts. Even those parts that sound um, not so resourceful, there'll still be wisdom in those parts. So allowing those, that wisdom to come through in those what I would call sacred spaces of coaching, of supporting groups to be able to identify a way forward um, to identify to, to not give up but actually look at what is what is here that I can still that I can still do to create a positive change um, to adapt to become resilient and to grow and to nurture and so much more. Sue, so as we're getting closer to wrapping up, Sue, what are, what what are your thoughts about what, what we've shared today or perhaps what, what wisdom's coming up for you that you'd like to share with our listeners today about this work that we can do as coaches in all sorts of different ways to support our, our beautiful Mother Earth. You used the word, thank you, Janine, you used the word, um, you know, about showing up and I think that's the start. Show up show up with with your intention and even if you're not completely sure about what that is show up with your voice and your intention and your passion and your purpose and be open to discussion and and be prepared to be a bit vulnerable around that and that's what you know discussing the parts there's a, always a bit of vulnerability in there to 
you know, to look at the maybe the part that we believe is not necessarily so supportive always um, and, and the incredibly supportive part, which often have, you know, the, the same intention. So it's, again, looking at our intention, looking at our purpose, but, but showing up and showing up with your voice and showing up with your passion and, um, and just being open to, to making the change, you know, that, that we've all, I think, agreed that needs to happen. Mm. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited again to be working with these two amazing people and they have certainly supported me in my journey of um, looking at what we can do as, as humans um, and as coaches to support, uh, again, our beautiful Mother Earth um, and you know everything that lives in it, on it, within it. And so, again, as I, meant, well, as I mentioned earlier on the um, podcast, the three of us have been meeting for, for quite some time looking at ways of how we can support organisations, businesses, groups, whatever it may be, in relation to their climate, their climate perhaps um, challenge or opportunities, because there'll be some organizations that are ready to look at oh, how can, you know, what, what is mine to do that I can not only support my organization, but also that the rest of the the rest of the system. And then there'll be others that will be finding it really incredibly challenging um, and perhaps even walk away from it. Who knows? So we we are very, um, again, excited about the opportunity to do this work together. So before we close out this podcast, Tim and Sue, is there anything that you'd like to share about this work that we're doing as Empower World, as For I, and Sue, you'll have to remind me again of your business's name because I only know you as Sue Glendinning, the wonderful Sue Glendinning. <laughs> Quantum Results Coaching is Thank you. It's my business. Thank you. Would you like to share anything else about the work that we're looking to do? Um, I'm very excited about the work that we are looking to do together or have been doing together and what we are creating. Um, and, and I think, you know, creating is, is the perfect word because it's, the potential, which we've talked about before, but it's the opportunity that um, we're going to make available, I think, to people to be able to join in and be part of something that's that's going to be incredible and um, and they will be the change makers. So we'll, we'll be the change makers who will be taking part. Uh, and it's a very exciting uh, project and I'm delighted to be working on it with um, but two um, such amazing people and such amazing coaches. So, thank you. And I'll, I'll include Marie in it too. She's unfortunately in another time zone, so I often can't meet us, but I'll, I'll bring her in as well. Thank you, Sue. And Tim. I've, yeah, for me, I, I'm going to say I, I hope that... Um, what we are soon to offer will uh, provide all those who, who, who seek to um, be in the work of changing our world. Um, I, I hope it, that it can provide what we are experiencing. I, I, I feel like we're prototyping in, you know, in this journey that we've been on. Um, yeah. As, folk that help folk change um and yeah you know what we what we've been doing is sensing into a need or needs right each other's our clients you know the 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 the, the next proximate whole you know the the market uh whatever you want to refer it to and and i think this space or you know kind of convened you know coach held um space you know for people who are um wanting to and already you know doing the work of changing um 
the, the, the knowing that I have is that that doing together can be a place of becoming ready for whatever lies ahead. And I think fundamentally that's what this, that's what this work is. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, powerfully said, becoming ready for what lies ahead. Mm. And yes, we are incredibly resourceful. We are incredibly naturally creative, resourceful and whole. And sometimes we forget. So, and I, I really trust that we three, part of what we want to do is for those who want to join us is to tap into that incredible resourcefulness that lies within. So thank you both um, amazing and beautiful human beings for joining me today on Empower World's podcast. And uh, I hope that we can come together maybe in a, another year's time to reflect about our learnings and what's been showing up based on what we plan for launch very soon. So thank you listeners and please do provide us feedback. We are always open to any suggestions you have in relation to topics or thoughts about what we can do differently. So thank you for joining us. Bye for now. Thanks for listening. You can find out more about us on our website, www.empower-world.com and on our social media networks, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Be empowered.